On the big news stories overnight, the NHS to close the UK's only dedicated gender identity clinic for children and young people. Now, Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust have been told to shut the clinic by the spring after it was criticised in an independent review. This review said that the current model of care was leaving young people at considerable risk of poor mental health and distress and having one clinic was not a safe or viable long-term option. Um, uh, to talk about this in more detail, somebody will know a lot more about it than me, uh, women's rights campaigner Kelly J. Keane. Kelly, good morning. Hi, good morning. I'd like to apologise for Verity, my assistant producer. Your name is Kelly J. Keen, and she apparently called you Jelly K. Bean. Is that right? Is that, and that's what you... Yeah, that's what my husband calls me, so it's fine. <laughs> well done, V. Excellent. Um, can you do me a favour? I've always said on this show that I want people to explain uh, stuff in, in layman's terms. A lot of people waking up this morning will have seen this headline and won't understand. Let's talk about it. Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust have been told to shut this dedicated gender identity clinic for children and young people. Can you tell me about it? Before we talk about why, what was it? How long has it been going? What are the issues? OK, so it's been giving out... So what, what it is, is if your child decides that they are born in the wrong body, which is a euphemistic term, which I think is nonsensical, but let's say your child is a girl and thinks she's a boy... Um, maybe 20 years ago, you'd have said, no, actually, you're, you're a girl, and that would have been the end of it. Uh, but now we can take them through a medical pathway in which they get puberty blockers um, in this country uh, as young as 11, not anymore. Uh, and then they would go through this pathway of then being a medical patient for life. Um, the Tavistock started these experimental drugs of puberty blockers, uh, I'm going to say about 15 years ago, but... Um, I haven't, I haven't got the data right in front of me, but quite some time ago, long enough to damage a number of children. And what puberty blockers do is they um, eradicate fertility, they stop you going through puberty, they stop um, your sexual function as an adult. So they are really, really dangerous experimental drugs that we were given to children, um, and we did so almost without any research whatsoever. It's an absolute medical scandal. Um, this clinic is due to close. Now, it's one of those issues, <clears throat> i just give you, I've always been honest, people will have opinions, I've always said that I would give my opinion. Um, I disagree with you when you say that the wrong body is nonsensical. In, in the past, without going into details about what I did in the past, I've spoken to many people, many genuine people, who absolutely, truthfully have been born in the wrong body. What I think this is about, and why I think it is right that, that, that Tavistock has been forced to close, is this should not be done on a whim. Let, let me give you... I, I said this the other day uh, on a television show and people looked at me like I'd landed from Mars, right? Kelly, my daughter is in a school, I want to be specific, and there are 33 kids in the year of 12 year, year, years of age, OK? Girls. Mm -hmm. Last year, of the 33, 11, that's 33%, were seeing a child psychologist due to their gender concerns. Now, I've already said there are plenty of genuine people who have their concerns, but unfortunately we now live in a world where I'm not saying it becomes popular, and I'm not saying it... it but places like this, treading carefully, should not be making it easy. You talk about mental health, and I think that's really, really important. I'm not saying that anybody who goes for gender identity counselling is going to change their mind, but from what you read about this report there wasn't enough perhaps background work done enough time given to the individuals would that be a fair comment that's absolutely a fair comment i mean look i i find the whole concept of a gender identity to be something that i can't quite get my head around i think it's something that you know we are our bodies i think that's the be all and end but there are people, people but there are there are genuine people born in the wrong body i will, I will give you that but this is what frightens i guess you and me the numbers of referrals to the Gender Identity Development Service in 2011 was 138. Yes. By 21 was two and a half thousand near as damn it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so my question would be, and I'm not an expert, are those two and a half thousand, have they been quashed and quietened and not able to speak out for years? And if they haven't, then that's appalling and we should be helping. Is it now, I'm not saying the thing to do, you know what I'm trying to say in the correct way, but the genuine people, the genuine people who need help, 
I believe, need to find or, or be provided with a service that is completely and utterly thorough and completely and utterly regulated and done in the right way. That's what you and I yeah. would agree on, right? Yeah, uh, look, this is children. So it doesn't really matter whether you and I agree that anybody yeah. is born in the wrong body or whether I think a 25-year-old can make that decision. These were children. Yeah. I think that is the big thing. Yeah, and big now that they've closed the gender identity uh, or will close the gender identity um, uh, service at Gibbs, I think what's really worrying is it then goes regional. Um, my hope is that when we talk about holistic care of children who for want of a better word, think their gender identity is different than their biological sex. Um, what will now happen is we will give them the right uh, therapy. And I think that is the only, absolutely. for me, that's the only solution. I think but you're right. You I think it's absolutely about, as I said, therapy. It's about mental health. It's about, it, it, it's almost about detail, isn't it? Yes, of course. I mean, a lot of these children come, they were coming from, uh, homophobic homes so if they weren't sort of stereotypically boy or girl in their behavior uh, their parents were concerned that they might be turn out to be gay um, there was uh, often um, comorbidities so you might have had um, children with an autism diagnosis you might have had children who were uh, badly bullied at school there's a whole host of yeah. reasons why somebody might want to disassociate themselves from their bodies and I think if we can find the root of that that's so much better for those children than taking them down a pathway of puberty blockers. And I'm, 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 I'm so pleased to have you on. I apologise profusely that, that, that Verity called you Jelly Bean, but um, <laughs> seriously, I've loved having I really appreciate you being on this morning, and I hope to speak to you very soon. Uh, Kelly J. Keane, uh, women's rights campaigner, talking about the news that the NHS is to close the UK's only dedicated gender identity clinic for children and young people, and you heard from her there, the very major reasons why that is a good decision in her mind, and actually, you talk Talk about age and yes there will be people who need that but I think the most important thing that Kelly said and I think she's right is the mental health the impact and the thoroughness by which that sort of organization should be organized